Ah, ship refits. This is something that happens to just about every warship, and pretty much every merchant ship, at some point in their lifetime. Of course, it can take many forms. There's the more generic refit, the kind where you just go and dry dock for a bit to fix up wear and tear, or maybe modify something that hasn't quite worked as you wanted it to. Pretty much every ship, should they serve for any decent amount of time, has to do something like this. It's just a normal process of running a ship. Things wear out, things don't work properly, and you have to go and dry dock and fix it. Simple enough, but at the same time, there's more extensive refits as well. That's the kind where the ships are taken down for a bit and rebuilt, to some extent or another. Where you have to keep a ship in service for any number of reasons, but you know the thing is obsolete. And this is still relevant for warships or merchant ships, but for the purposes of keeping this a history short story, I will focus mostly on warships here. So, when you take a ship in because it's obsolete or at best obsolescent, but you have to keep it in service. This is more common than you would think because navies that don't have a lot of money can't really afford to get new ships, so the next best thing is to just take an old ship, fix it up a bit, and pretend it's new. You modernize the ship, you give it some TLC so she can continue serving on, things like that. This kind of partial modernization was extremely common during the 1930s, and admittedly the 1920s to some extent, as the Washington and London treaties made building brand new ships a bit problematic. You see this a lot with the American battleships, standard type and otherwise. They'll go in for a bit and come out with new superstructure and secondaries. New boilers and turbines. Well, new, with air quotes you can't see. These were often taken from canceled ships like the South Dakotas, but I suppose they're still new compared to the ships they were stuck in. You would also see torpedo bulges, maybe some changes to the armor here and there. But other than the very visible tripod mass, there wasn't a huge amount done, at least not compared to more extensive refits. Another pertinent example is the less modernized ships of the Queen Elizabeth class. In this case, Barham and Malaya. You see them get modernized, yes, but nowhere near the rebuilds their sister ships got. Like I said, this is a fairly common thing for cash-strapped navies that need to keep ships up and running well past their end of service date. And for better or worse, that did include the Royal Navy between the World Wars. It's also extremely common with places like Greece, the South Americans, or even Taiwan, for that matter. It can also, I guess, be compared to the idea of taking a decades-old tank and slapping some ERA and better sensors on it to call it modern, along with a new engine or something like that. That's a more contemporary example, shall we say. Beyond that, you start getting into more wacky territory. On the still relatively minor end, you have the initial refits to the Renowns, just as an example, where they don't change much on the exterior, but are actually pretty heavily modified on the less visible side of things. For example, at least in this case, fitting much heavier armor than they were supposed to have, because the British happened to have a lot of good quality belt armor left over from the conversion of HMS Eagle. That belt armor alongside deck armor increases and torpedo bulges, aren't the most visible, at least when they're not in dry dock, changes, but they're still a pretty big refit. Not many ships go into refit and come out with several inches of extra belt armor. On a similar note, you have the Congo class over in Japan, which are also battle cruisers, which were modernized to the point that the Japanese called them fast battleships. Admittedly, that modernization mostly consisted of improving their speed and superstructure after a couple rounds of modernization, and the change in armor was, if roughly equivalent to the Renown's, slightly thinner, about 8 inches compared to 9 inches. That is substantially thinner than pretty much every German GK or HMS Hood. So calling them a fast battleship is a tad bit questionable, but you do you, Japan. Even so, those are relatively tame refits. Even something like the Queen Elizabeth's proper rebuilds are still, again, relatively tame. 
It's mostly torpedo bulges, superstructure, and secondary armament changes and the like. Not any really big change to the whole form or anything like that. It's here where you get past that into the really wacky stuff. And believe me, I'm not even covering every single wacky rebuild here. One of the best examples, and best known examples for that matter, would be the Italian rebuilds. Where you take a pre-World War I designed dreadnought, not even a super dreadnought, mind you, and turn them into something completely different. Their armor remained pretty thin for a battleship, and their speed was honestly roughly equivalent to the second generation German Grosserkreuzers, while their guns were bored out to 12.6 inches, 302 millimeters. They lost their central turret for this, along with their original casemate secondaries, in favor of a completely rebuilt superstructure, a new bow, literally a new bow grafted onto the old in the case of the Cavors, and turreted secondary guns. Which for the Italians is actually going back a step since their first dreadnought had turreted secondaries. But I digress. These rebuilds came out looking and performing nothing like they were when they went in. They're down a turret, yes, but their guns are slightly bigger, also slightly less accurate because of boring them out, but they were still small, light, and arguably outmoded ships, but the technical triumph of these rebuilds cannot be understated. The Italians took slow, small, pre-World War I battleships and turned them into relatively fast and effective ships for the 1930s and even the 1940s. Still not the best battleships in the world by a long shot, though, and I say that as someone who likes the Italian ships. They're still not really fast battleships. They're still small, half thin armor, and small guns. But for what they were meant to do, which was counter the Dunkirks for the most part, they're pretty good ships. Now, I could go on and on from here with things like the Renown's second rebuild, or the Russian rebuilds of their battleships, or the even more famous than the Italian Pearl Harbor rebuilds of American standards, but to keep this as a history short story video, like I said earlier, well, for that, we end with probably the wackiest of all warship rebuilds. At least that I'm aware of. I know there's stuff like Zubian, but we'll get into that later. For this ship, we return to the lands of Turkey during the Ottoman Empire, where money for the navy was always tight, and they kept ships in service long past their sell-by date, as it were. We're getting new ships sometimes took the early 20th century equivalent to a GoFundMe. Here we find the central battery ironclad. I know I'm going to butcher this. Mezudi. But moving right along from that butchering of the Turkish language. Built in the 1870s in Great Britain. This is a ship that will get her own video at some point in the future. For here, I will mostly focus on the rebuild though even then in relatively short and concise form. To begin with a little background, this was one of the largest and most powerful ships in the Ottoman fleet upon her completion. Powerfully armed with 12 10-inch guns, albeit their muzzle loaders, and heavily armored with 12 inches of armor plate. Still, already a bit anachronistic looking with her sail rig, this ship would serve for about 30 years in the Ottoman fleet, by which point she was very outdated. And again, I use serve with air quotes. She barely saw any actual service, spending most of her life rotting by the dock because the Ottomans couldn't afford to run her. Or crew her. Again, they didn't have money for the Navy. And on that note, they have a relatively large and outdated warship. Slow, but big. Outdated, but heavily armored. So what are they going to do? Well, since they don't have the money for other ships, and the Navy needs to start getting new ships because of how rapidly technology was advancing, the Ottomans got it in their head to modernize their old ironclads. They have the ships, they're still technically viable, so why not modernize them? In the case of Mezudi, they would go ham on that modernization. They rebuilt her from a blocky, sail-rigged ironclad into what resembled, externally anyway, a legitimate pre-dreadnought. A small one, 
but a pre-dreadnought nevertheless. Complete with a proper superstructure and two turrets, one on the bow and stern each, with 9-inch guns. Which admittedly is more armored cruiser than pre-dreadnought, but, you know. As well as replacing the 10-inch muzzle loaders with breech-loading 150mm guns. Her boilers and power plant were also refit, to the point she could theoretically make 17-inch knots. Slow for a pre-dreadnought, but much faster than an ironclad. Now, just looking at the raw stats there, that doesn't seem bad for refitting a 30-year-old ironclad. And yeah, it's an impressive feat of technology. But she never got those 9-inch guns. She used cardboard mock-ups instead. So, honestly, she was a bit of a paper tiger. Though in the confines of the Aegean, I suppose that 12 5.9-inch guns was nothing to sneeze at. Again, I'm not really going to go into her service history here. That'll go into its own video. So with that wacky rebuild out of the way, and I'm sure the pictures are not even coming close to getting across just how wacky this is, we'll end the video. Again, I'm going to cover other aspects of refits, such as the post-Pearl Harbor rebuilds or the full story of Mezudi, at a later date. For now, I hope you all enjoyed, and remember, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. It really does help me out.